What is up guys, Self Milk here. I know I haven't made a video in like a month, literally. Um, and that's because my After Effects has gone out, so I will not be able to video game videos up for a while. Sorry. It's just uh, money is really tight right now and I can't afford to go to the library very often and upload videos and stuff like that. So I'm actually using my ice cream recorder, ice cream screen recorder right now for this video. And this is going to be like sort of a tutorial on photo manipulation. If you've ever seen that, like in Photoshop or on the internet, I'll show you my examples and I'll show you some in Google. So here's some of mine. And also, I want to preface this video by saying I just told you I don't have After Effects, so I won't have an intro or an outro for this. And I might upload this from my house. I don't know when this video is going to come up. But when you do watch it, just know it's not going to be top quality because I can't edit very well. But um, yeah, here's some photos I got. And also, the music is kind of quiet, but I'm listening to the royalty-free music from Trap Nation right now. I'm just going to kind of have their playlist on sh uh, what's it called? Shuffle right now. But yeah, if you want to check them out, definitely recommend it. They got cool music. But, um, yeah, okay, here we go. We have this with a turtle, and I don't know how well I did, but I added the sun, the background, the little vine in his mouth hanging off right here to the. This was supposed to be like water falling out of him, but it kind of turned into like a flower y effect. And then I put the fence and lighthouse on him, this grass area on his back. We got. I just made this actually today earlier, and that kind of inspired me to make this video. Got the pug with the space goggles looking down, you can see his reflection. This sky is placed there, this isn't the original sky. This, this was originally just this planet, and I added this one, made it look like they were colliding. Or about to collide. This one's literally a picture of my backyard, all this. And then added the space in the tower. This is a picture I took of a frog outside our house. I just changed his eye colors and gave him a little clock tower strapped to his back and the city obviously in the background. But um, let's show you some on Google. I, I, I'm really interested in this stuff. It's really cool because you can see like before and afters right here like how amazing you can switch it into something crazy like this. I love distorting the size. That's a really cool idea. That's really cool. I, seeing this picture just makes me think how lame my imagination is compared to some people. That's cool. I would have to say my favorite is size manipulation. Like, I don't know if that's size manipulation. It looks like they tried to make it look like he was normal sized, but he looks kind of giant right there. Stuff like this, that's cool. This, that's really neat. Yeah, I honestly I don't even know what I want to create. Um, what should we make? Um, first off, let's start in Photoshop, making a new document. Uh, my favorite thing to do is my custom right here, 1920 by 1080 by 300 PPI resolution. It's like your basic fit everywhere thing, 1080p HD. Okay, white canvas. Always a scary start, but let's... Hmm. Let's see. Think of a, something that can easily be size. Size can be manipulated really easy. I already did frog, pug. Let's try snail. I like snails. I like the way snails look. Okay, my first suggestion would be to go into here. Larger than two or four. Maybe even... Ah, eh, that's a little extreme. I would say 4 megapixels is the most you would need. That way when you resize it, it's not pixely and it doesn't look super altered. And then with a white background or a solid background so you can easily grab them like this. This is this would be really easy to grab him with Photoshop. Okay, we got our snail. What should we make him do? Let's look, kind of like look at their body shape and the lighting. See what it looks like. Somewhere you could stick them where they kind of fit in. You know, not be completely out of the picture. His body looks like he's on 
Hmm. Should make him kind of a sliding behind the city, I think. Yeah, let's do that. It's easy. Uh, let's do city. See what comes up. And make sure again, like the pictures are pretty big sized. It's still got my settings saved from larger than full movies earlier. Ooh, this one. Well, mm, it's not that bright in that picture. We need a bright picture. Well, we could alter him, but uh, let's, I think this is actually. That might be the photo I used before. No, that's this is one. <laughs> this is the one I used in the uh, frog photo. Okay, we'll just use this one. We can change the colors. I'm gonna let you know that I've never had like professional Photoshop training or anything, so I'm not necessarily super good, but I've learned a few things just by using it for a couple of years now. And I'm sorry, my internet's extremely slow, so this will probably take forever to load. What else can I make? Okay, he, snail, is crawling behind that city. Uh, what else could we do? We could add something to his shell if we wanted to. Maybe like... Hmm, antennas? Maybe? Can that work? Let's see. I don't know how to spell antenna. How do you spell antenna? Something like that. Google. Google will find out what I'm trying to say. Here we go. Antenna. Yeah, we'll have a little antenna coming out of here. And maybe one out of his head. I think that'd look normal. And then, uh, this one. Yeah. Well, this would work for the top of his head. Not, oh yeah, the top of his head. But, still anyone to come out of the side of his shell. It'd be kind of hard. Oh. No, we'll just use this one. So view this image. Alright, what else? What else? What else? What else? What else can we do? Let's go and save this image. We'll name everything snail so we can find it easy. Snail antenna. Sorry, I'm hearing advertisements in the background too. Snail five, that works. Save. Mm -mm, wait for the city to load. What else can we do? Anything, anything? Uh, I can't think of anything else we could add. Maybe like a cooler sky, a different sky, because that one's kind of just blue and boring. Just look at the cool sky, see what comes up. Still larger than 4 megapixels. Uh, really cloudy, even though it's like low to the ground, it look really neat. Something else you gotta think about, like trying to make it, trying to make it different, but not like so far out that it obviously looks really crappy. Like this many large clouds wouldn't be like right here on the city. So that should look pretty cool once we get it going. And once it saves, or loads in. What's this? We can save the city image. Snail City. That'd be a good name of a city, actually. Snail City, I like that. Just load. Can't tell if that's loaded all the way, it's kind of pixely. It should still work. Okay. Snail Clouds. Alright. So we can go ahead and just go back to Google. Keep it on images in case you need to grab something or you think about something extra. Okay, so what you're going to do is open all those things you just downloaded. 
and now antennas in the city, some clouds, some five. Okay. Alright, so I would recommend first grabbing what's obviously going to be your background and move that into your untitled image. Uh, you're going to want to transform it, obviously, it's way too large. Oops. Scale. Click that chain so it stays uniform. And then, boop. And you can unclick this, and it might distort a little bit, but it's okay. It's a large image, it should look totally fine. Bam, right there. Okay. So, I would recommend grabbing, hmm, let's see. It would be easier to place the snail first, or the background. Really whatever order, any order is going to work fine. So let's go ahead and grab this. Quick selection tool. It should, for the most part, grab everything pretty easy, because the sky's not the same color. I usually use this to get the large surface first, and if I can't grab everything as well as I want to, I'll go through with the magnetic lasso, or the original lasso. Let's go to zoom in here. Grab our quick selection tool again. Hold Alt to deselect things that you don't want selected. In this case, the buildings. We do not want to grab them because we're going to switch out the sky behind them. And we want a semi realistic look when we switch out the sky. So just grab everything. Actually, ungrab what it already has grabbed on the buildings. Um, I have to make it pretty small. Scroll through here, get the big parts. This right here. You select that building. This red part. I do apologize that you have to sit here and watch all of this. For some people, you'll appreciate it because I know some people on you or any really tutorial sites like to go really fast. And it's not that I can't go fast, but I really want all of you to understand as much as you can and get as much as you can from this video. So I'm not going to skip anything. I'm not going to fast forward it. I want you to know exactly what you do, how to do it how I do it, and maybe you could adapt it the way you want to take different approaches. It's all about figuring out your own way to do things. So now that you've quickly deselected some of the buildings, you can go ahead and grab the lasso tool. Oops, I do. And go through and do a little, even more fine tuning. So we have it selected to add, so hold alt deselect, you don't want to grab your buildings. Just go through here, deselect as much as you can. You don't have to be this perfect, but, all right, I guess not perfect, but this detailed, but for me personally, it feels a lot better. What did I do? Select this building, this corner. Ah, let's see. I'm gonna leave this out just because you can barely see it anyways. And it would have mean having to go inside and grab all little see-through parts inside of it, and that's just too much work. Especially for a tutorial like this. Now, if you want to do it yourself, uh, go for it. It would look a lot better. But I'm not gonna do it. I'm just deselecting mostly the corners because the corners, of course, part of the skyline are an important aspect. Then spots where it does need to be selected like that, just grab it. Okay. 
Yeah. I do apologize that I can't have like an intro and all that fancy stuff I used to have. I will get it back eventually. It's just financially, it's not going too amazing for me. So it's a little hard to do everything right now. But again, once get some stability going again, obviously I will be putting more videos up. I do appreciate everyone who has subscribed recently, or all my subscribers actually. It means a lot. And I think we're at 48 subscribers right now. So when I hit 50, that's going to be really awesome. I love you guys, and thanks for subscribing. I do try to get as much content out as possible. Really wish I could play some games again, but uh, I just can't. I, I don't want y'all waiting on the loading screen. Sometimes they take forever, and I can't edit them out right now. I don't want y'all having to watch that and just be bored to death. But um, I will try and get back as soon as possible and start doing those again for all of you. This is taking a lot longer than I thought it would. <laughs> okay, hurry up, come on. Come on. Try and speed it up here a little bit. And again, you don't have to be this perfect or you could be more, you don't have to be this detailed or you can be more detailed. It's all in your preferences and what you're going for. For me, it's just basically a tutorial trying to get you to ground. Builds you a foundation so you can work up from it on how this works. Because it's really fun. I really enjoy manipulating photos and then showing people like, look at this. This isn't real, but it looks real, doesn't it? You know what I mean? It's really cool. And it's really simple too. I think, I used to think it was very complicated when I first saw photos like that. I thought, oh my gosh, those are like, you know, professionals being paid hundreds of dollars for doing that. But no, it's, I would think more often than not, just people having fun posting it and it gets popular. Spots, spots like this is where the lasso tool is really uh, more necessary. But what I'm going to do for the sake of this tutorial is just keep this red part because all this antenna stuff is just, it's not, I'm not feeling it. Boom, real easy. Easy, quick, and it won't look that bad because the next guy will just cover that one up. Alright, um, let's go ahead and do the same thing here, just cut out the parts of this building that would be too complicated to work around. Not too complicated, but for the sake of this, oops. Alright, okay, that's good. So, if you don't know how to do that, you just click the magnifying glass, fit screen, 400, fit screen, fill screen. I need to fit screen. So with this guy selected right now with that, the next thing you can do is grab your, whatever you want to stick in there. Just grab it, pull it over, and this part's a little tricky, but the easiest way I found to do it is go ahead and click uh, deselect, edit your photo how you want to edit it. I'm just going to make it fit to where I can get the most clouds in there at once. Ignore the jumping. The only you can do is press... Oh no! Why did it go away? Okay, that didn't work, so... Hmm, how am I going to do this? No, that doesn't look that bad. That looks kind of cool. So, with this selected, what you can press is select inverse, and that's going to grab everything but what you selected, then just press delete. And make sure. Okay, never mind. So deselect 
And there you go, you have your clouds in there. Um, yeah, for the sake of this, that's good enough. Sake of this tutorial, that is that works fine. So what you can do now is we're done with the city, we're done with the clouds. So let's go ahead and take this antenna. Okay, so another quick selection tool thing. You can play around with the select toolbar up here. There's a lot of easy ways. There's a bunch of different ways you can select things on a photo, but one of the easier things is if you have a pure white background like this, is click color range, image down here, click the white area, and then press invert. And that just means grab everything besides that white color. And it'll grab it for the most part, and it will grab the white inside of what you want, so you have to kind of come in here and just quick way to just, just to uh, lasso make sure add to selection is selected not just make a selection and just grab what it accidentally got that and then this little reflection here and then you can just grab this grab inside your selection and oh my bad. actually what we're going to do is come in here with this still selected press copy paste cool and you'll notice when you do this in the scale short you'll notice when you do this um, you'll have this little white fringe because it doesn't perfectly select it the best way to get rid of that is to come in here and go to layer, all at the bottom go to matting, defringe, and select whatever it looks like, how many white pixels there are. So we're going to say three, press OK, and there it goes, it gets rid of that fringe on the side. You play around with the settings on that, it's, it's really, it works really well. You know what, this, I'm going to go ahead and move the snail into the city picture first. Again, color range, image, invert, and it selects mostly what you want. Just come in here and make sure add to selection is selected. And grab all the spots that it's trying to grab, that you want to keep. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. A lot of this can be done, you know, after all is said and done, all your photos are pasted where you want them and then you can start playing with the colors and stuff and it's really easy to overlook some things you'll see what I mean later okay so got him selected pull him into the city image and you can see he's needs to be on the very top actually no he needs to be behind the city but above the clouds I'm trying to think about what I did now. <gasps> oh no. Oh gosh. I made a big boo boo. Oh, shoot. Okay, so. We're gonna have to go through here and delete the sky and the city to see the snow. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. Um, Oh, shoot. Give me a second. Yeah, there's no way that selection was saved. Dang it. Alright, well, we're going to have to go through and select that all again. I'm not going to do it as well this time because I don't want to spend that much time. I don't want you to have you watch all that. So. You're gonna have to forgive how crappy some of this becomes. Again, for the sake of time. I should have saved the selection. Just trying to grab this. That part was that's good. Cool. Oh my god, 
the tip of that antenna and that's it. Alright, there. And then I got the slice like it, delete it. Boom. Alright. Grab our snail. He's way too large right now. Go ahead and shrink him down. Let's rotate him because he can't see his face. And bam! Alright. Again, you can do the go in here, layer, matting, defringe. We'll do 10 pixels. Get rid of most of that white fringe on him. No, we can grab layer two. Oh shoot, no, we can't. <laughs> um, I don't like the white around this building, but again, that's just because I didn't do a very good selection. Okay, what are we gonna do now? Add the antennas. So pull the ant. Actually, made a boo boo again. Undo. Copy. Paste. Layer, matting, defringe. Bam. Okay. Scale it. How big do we want it? That big? Oh, no. That'll work. Let's rotate it a little bit. When those little swivelly arrows is next to your image, that's when you know it's giving you the option to rotate. So we're going to put it right here. Oh shoot. Scale it just a little bit more. And if you're if it's like locking to the grid like mine is right now, it kind of just locks its own spot. Hold control and you can have freedom to select it wherever you want. We're actually gonna put it right here. And then zoom in and delete that little part right there. Because you wouldn't see that if it was properly attached. screen. Okay, he's got a little antenna right there. What you can do also is duplicate this layer. You now have two antennas. And since he would obviously have one on the other side as well, flip horizontal. And then you could... Where would it be? Right. Here, somewhere. Let's move it behind him so you can see Oops. Kind of what it would look like realistically. Yeah, I like that. Alright, so it looks like behind him he has it on the other side. And then let's add one more on his head. Because for some reason I feel like he would have one on his head. And then it would be behind this building, so behind the city. You can see a little bit of bad cutting right there. Easy fix. All you do is zoom in. Make sure your antenna layer is selected. Delete it. Delete where the tower is. Where you would obviously not be able to see the antenna. screen there it's not perfect but for the tutorial sake it's good enough all right now, um everything's mostly for the most part where you want it so I would recommend not merging layers until the very last step and merging layers just means flatting the image to where you don't have all these different layers where everything becomes one solid image and for the sake of being able to add shadows and lighting, I would never merge layers to the very last step. So what you would do now 
is go through and basically artificially add shadows and lighting effects. My favorite thing to do is grab the lasso tool for this. And basically look at your sky and your biggest parts of your image and see where their sun is coming from. So for the buildings in the city, the shadow is on you know this side over here. And the sun is obviously over here. For the clouds, it looks like they're mostly the same. This side of the cloud is bright. This side is shadowed. So we're gonna do the same thing for our snail. Since he's obviously in a different area due to the lighting, it wouldn't make sense. So we'll make sure snail selected. And grab the parts that the sun would be hitting the brightest. So this whole side of him. And then make sure add to selection is selected, not just selection. If you have just selection selected, it's gonna grab something completely new. So make sure you have add to selection. And this part of the shell would get some sunlight because it's, you know, up a little more. Um, maybe the tops of its antenna, this front side would get sun. Or his eyes. Are those his eyes? I mean his eyes, my bad. Okay, so let's go ahead and grab a little bit up here too. And the next thing would be to select, modify, and feather. And what this is going to do is kind of give it a feathered effect, like it's going to softly switch so it doesn't have like a hard surface where it's obviously been altered. So with a large object like him, I would do maybe 50 pixels. And go to levels. This is my favorite tool is levels to use. You can use brightness as well, but I feel like it doesn't give as good of an effect. So what you're gonna do is this is your black output. So if you reduce this, there's more white like that. And then your white, if you reduce that, there's more dark. So it kind of looks like a giant shadow. So what I would do is turn this up just a little bit to where it looks like the sun is hitting right here. Like that and then move on to the next parts of your image that obviously would be hitting by the sun so what would be next would be your antennas so you select that and this is this antenna over here so what parts of that would be hitting so hit by the sun and hmm to be honest, it's too small of an object for me, personally, to really care. And for the sake of the shortening of this tutorial, I'm not going to go into detail, but of course you would put light right here on this side, a little bit right here, a little bit on this side, a little bit right here, because that's where the sun is coming from. Um, the buildings, we went off that so we don't have to alter them. They already look like they're getting hit from that side. So. Yeah, really, the snail is the big, the big object right now. So after you do all your lighting, which we just did, you're gonna go into your shadows. So first thing I'm gonna think about is this antenna back here is behind the snail, so it would be darker. So same thing, just do the opposite levels. Make sure your antenna is selected both right here and in your layers panel, and decrease the brightness so it looks like it's more shaded compared to this one who's in the sun. And actually, that would be kind of simple, so just grab that too, make it look like it's the bright side the sun is hitting him more than the other one. Um, what would be next? Okay, our shadows. So the snail, obviously our big target. You would select the parts that would be getting the least amount of sun, so this part where the sun would not be hitting as bright as the other parts and then under his shell so we got that part selected and don't worry about it overlapping the city as long as it's just your snail object selected it will just work on the snail so the bottom side of this eyeball right here would be getting not as much this part and down here here 
whatever that is. Down here. And then this is an opportunity to make sure all your shadows come out. So this antenna, since the sun is coming from over here down here, the shadow from this antenna would be roughly right here. This one, you wouldn't be able to see that and shadow. This shadow would be right here somewhere. And then there might be a little bit of extension of a shadow on this part right here because of the shell's size over him. So maybe just a little bit more actually. And then you always want a feather. It's under select, modify, feather. We'll do 50 pixels. Mm. Yeah, we'll do 50 pixels again. Image adjustment levels and reduce the brightness so that it looks like there's a shadow right there. Uh, good. Do we need to go max out dark? No, we'll do. We'll do that. All right. Deselect it. Kind of, you know, just take take a lean back and look at it, and really think about, because. Me personally, lighting is the biggest factor in photo manipulation. Because if you have a person, like it looks like they're jumping, but there's no shadow coming from them, then it doesn't look like they're jumping. It looks like they're posted right there, because in reality, you'd know there'd be a shadow right there. So what else would possibly be a factor? So one of the things I'm thinking right now is the clouds. This snail is... His face and uh, shell are obviously going up into the clouds. So the clouds, if it was realistic, and even the tower, the clouds would be in front of the, the snail's left eye and the tower top, and his antenna top. So what you can do is select the clouds, and the parts that would be covering these like all this, select it, and I would recommend a feather almost every time you're doing photo manipulation. Maybe less of a feather. And copy that part of the clouds, paste it, and then put that layer over everything else. See? See how, see how you can see that the antenna is coming out from the top of the cloud? Because you know, clouds are like round. So you you would see them over, I'm trying to think about why the tower isn't being hidden by, did I not select enough? We'll go back and select it again. Uh, copy, paste, put this on top. I don't know why that tower is not being covered. Can I just delete it and it'll look alright? Nope, there's a white space in the back. Um, I'm trying to think about what I could do. Okay, what you could do is come up here, copy a white part of the cloud. Um, paste. Put that on the very top. And then move it directly over the cloud. Or the building, I mean. Uh, maybe you could blur it. See if blurring works. Blur, blur, and it shows you the shortcuts right here. So Alt Control F. We're going to press Alt Control F and just keep hitting that. And hopefully, blurring it out will kind of make it match. And if that doesn't work, what you can do is use the band aid. I don't know what the tool is called, I just call it the band-aid. Size it up and... Well, that's not working. Okay, so see, a big part of it is just experimenting. Seeing what works, what doesn't. We're just gonna... For now, we're just gonna leave that, because it's not cooperating at all. Um, that's really bothering me. I don't know why that's not going away. I don't like that. What's that?
What is it behind the tower? Okay, delete that because I don't know what that is. All right, sorry, started really get into that. Um, but yeah, you can see how how much that adds because you can barely see the tip of his eyeball right here, and that's really cool because that's how it would work in reality. You know, if something was going that high, you it, some of the cloud would hide it and then you'd see a little bit if it was above the clouds just like the antenna and it's really cool it adds a lot and if the building was behind the cloud that would look even better but I don't know I really don't know why it's not hiding I wish I did but I don't but yeah for that for for this sake that's good enough um what you could even do I'll take it an extra step just go ahead and add artificial cloud into the image and put it over his shell because I think that would look really nice so we're gonna go in here and just find a maybe a lone cloud this one maybe ooh right here the image. so go in there grab the image once it loads the song that's playing right now in the background is uh my outro song, so just use that. <laughs> so okay, we're gonna say snow cloud out. That's the best way I could think of it to be called. Open, grab it. Okay. Again, it's got a solid blue background, so best things color range image. Invert of blue, so all that white. Go in here and look at that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and defringe it a little bit, and then scale it down. Mm. Right there. And what I would do, since it has like a hard cutout and it's obviously misplaced, not obviously misplaced, but it has a hard cutout and just doesn't look right. What you could do is grab your eraser tool, make sure your opacity is down a little bit so it doesn't make solid cutout. Make sure it's cloud selected, and what you could do is, I need like a feather or what is this paintbrush? No, that's the wrong thing. Mode. I know there's like a okay airbrush style. So airbrush style is not as solid as some of your other choices. And what you could do is come in here and kind of yeah, it's not working the way I wanted to. So what we're actually gonna do is go ahead and go in here and delete, go back to the cloud and modify. We're going to contract the R selection. So contract it by 50. And what that does is make your selection a lot smaller, but keep the shape obviously like it did. And then go back, modify, feather it, feather it out by 100 pixels. So that way this time when we drag it in, Okay, boom, looks a lot more like a cloud, not a solid cutout. The feather tool is really amazing. If you aren't familiar with using feathering in Photoshop, I very strongly recommend you start using it and figuring out how it works because it's extremely powerful. We'll just place that right there. And would you look at that? Adds even another layer of coolness to it. Okay, mm. and I don't know if you can see it, but it's a very large square right here from the cloud I just pasted in. We're going to delete it because it doesn't fit. I know it might not look like I'm doing much on your screen, but 
I can see it very well. It's kind of irritating. All right, so I got that. And honestly, this video is 45 minutes long, way too long. So I'm going to end it right here. But that was it, guys. I just wanted to get a video out there because I know I haven't posted in like a month, and I apologize. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. This is just something I have. This is a hobby of mine, using Photoshop. But, um, yeah. Thanks for watching, guys. Leave a like, thumbs up, subscribe, share it, and I will catch y'all next time.